looks as though Laura Layla has quite effectively turned the tables on me. I don't think that she really meant to. Um, but the previous video that I made was meant to be about just how do we deal with that part of us which is illogical, um, that part of our nature. People tend to use terms like haves. I don't like to do that because it's a little bit misleading, I think. So I just say that aspect of ourselves. Um, and then I said something very categorical, that, that anger is temporary insanity. Now, the implication behind that, I suppose, is that anger is some sort of infection. It is some sort of thing we should inherently be averse to. But, according to my own point of view, in that very video, I said, the irrational is part of us. <laughs> um, and rather than attempting, I guess, to eradicate something, to negate something that is simply part of us, um, harnessing it, yoking it, I guess, is the interesting way to deal with it, I and mean, perhaps the most effective way. Uh, if it's going to happen, use judo on it. Don't use uh, a two-by-four between the eyes, I guess. <clears throat> and again, that's quite well in keeping with the idea of um, not negating part of yourself. Um, and it, it's an interesting illustration as to how the mind works, the compartments of the human mind, where you can have an opinion, for example, where I sort of posit the view that anger, which is normal human emotion, is a form of insanity, in other words, a pathological condition that has no redeeming qualities. Um, when I say that that must be eradicated, uh, or when I say something that may imply that, I'm disregarding another part of my reality, my other self, my other um, compartment, I guess, that says the human emotions are part and parcel of us. We cannot simply say, I'm not going to be what I am. Um, so if anger is part of being human, we're stuck with it, aren't we? But rather than being stuck with it, should we attempt to harness it? The uh, Hindus use the metaphor of the charioteer, who has all these emotions and senses and everything, as horses yoked to his chariot, but he is the one, the charioteer is the one who is in charge. You could be gender neutral, you could say the charioteer is a woman, <laughs> Athena springs to mind. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but. It's interesting how you can actually believe something and yet believe something contradictory. Now, I'm going to point out right now that there is a contradiction in some of the beliefs that I have, and I'm trying to sort of reconcile the two. On the one hand, there's, you know, I've developed over a very long period of time the idea that anger is insanity, and yet I've also got the idea that we are what we are. Now, if you've ever seen someone destroyed by anger, I have. <laughs> um, I hate to bring this in again, but, you know, the Irish community, we kind of have an anger issue. <laughs> the red face temper. Um, and, yeah, I, it's not a pretty sight when you see somebody who's completely fallen prey to it. So I guess it's my own personal experience that has led me to conclude that, yeah, there's just nothing redeeming about this emotion. But Laura Layla... Uh, sort of said, well, no, it can be used to a certain purpose, uh, and it can be used productively. Now, I don't think she was referring to the idea of anekandavada, or whatever, the, the idea that we must understand and accept what we are without falling prey to the dark side, I guess, of our vices or our virtues, if you want to call it a dark side, or just the negative side. Um, in other words, if I see a problem like anger, it, I shouldn't just sort of say it must be eradicated, because if it's part of us, it's part of us. But I must use it in such a way that it is not toxic. Sort of brings me back to the idea of toxic ignorance, or, sorry, <laughs> toxic innocence. Now, although there's toxic ignorance, too. Um, <clears throat> if an excess of anything is 
not advisable. If that's sort of a violation of Midan Agan, uh, all things in balance or nothing in excess, is an excessive aversion to something equally unbalanced? <laughs> that's an interesting uh, philosophical question, isn't it? Is an excessive aversion to something the creation of an imbalance in one's being, if you want to call it that. Um, our society tends to think that there's no depths to which you can't plumb, say, the feeling of righteous ind indignation. Today we live in the age of ressentiment where everybody is, feels himself or herself a victim and that um, uh, everybody sort of is I don't know, I guess being passive-aggressive with everybody else. Uh, that's what a lot of people have said, or, you know, <laughs> Nietzscheans, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, generally say about the modern society. It's pure ressentiment. Um, however, um, that's an excess of, what would you call that? An excess of aversion to injustice. I guess you would call that, and in, in, in justice based upon an idea of the perfect world. Um, <clears throat> an excessive aversion to injustice. Is that still uh, an excess? <laughs> um, I said before, and about a year ago, an excess of empathy is toxic. Is an excess of aversion to injustice or to harm or to anything like that, is that an imbalance? First glance, I'm inclined to agree that it is. 